Look at how smooth the footage and gameplay is. I always love how this game looks. Hey everyone, Digital David here. Today in this video, I'm going to be checking out the Innocent 27 inch gaming monitor. Specifically, this is the 27G1S version featuring 1440p resolution, 240 hertz for the refresh rate, and a one millisecond response time. I did receive this sample to try out, but any opinion expressed in this video is strictly my own. That being said, if you're interested in this product or you want to find out more about it, the link to it will be in the video description. Take a look at the retail box and packaging. Everything looks great. Very generic here with just Innocent's logo and branding and the nice little design of the monitor on the back. They actually have some unboxing instructions for you up on the top right there. So now without further ado, let's go ahead and open it up. Here are all the contents. First up, we have our product literature consisting of their customer service and contact information, followed by a quick start guide, walking us through stand setup and installation, as well as how to connect our cables and some monitor specific menu settings. Next, you'll see we have our power cord and cable, followed by our power supply and adapter with barrel plug connector. We have one included display port cable right here followed by the stand in two pieces. And lastly, we have the monitor itself. Let's go ahead, let's look at this in more detail. Here's a look at the monitor from the back. You'll notice front and center, we have our Visa mount. It's 75 by 75 millimeters. Got some LED lights up here. Everything kind of comes to a point with this design and I really like how it looks. Stand release lever. We have our power button and our menu button all in one. And on this side, we have our Kensington security lock. Flipping it around, you'll see we have our DC power plug, two HDMI ports, two display ports, and your audio jack. Very bottom here, you'll notice some additional product information. Here's a nice side view and angle for you again. Increases in thickness and comes up to a point here. Top down view, same thing, you'll see that point to the back. Now let's look at it from the very front. We got the Innocent logo and branding. Looks like we have two LEDs down here at the bottom and an indicator light right there. Near bezel-less design for the sides and the top. And looking at it, you can tell where the pixels stop about right here with my thumb. If you can see that, maybe depending on the angle, you can see it up close here too with the light reflections. But pixels are gonna stop right about there on the display. Now let's go ahead, let's get the stand installed. Stand installation is tool free, so we're able to just line the two pieces up like so, just like that, and drop it into place. And now we can just finger tighten this screw down here. There is a slot if you wanted to use a flathead or a Phillips head, but it's not gonna be necessary. Just till it's nice and snug, then you can fold that flat. Now we have the stand installed, and it's time to take the stand and snap it into the base of our monitor here. So let's go ahead, just like so. We have two lips up there at the top that we need to line up and gently snap in place. And now we can stand the monitor upright. So this stand features height adjustment. There's our maximum height. There's our minimum height, or you can land somewhere in between. We have a nice tilt. We can tilt forward or tilt backwards. We also have rotation, so we can rotate it to the left or to the right, it's great that we have that awesome pivoting. We can also change our viewing experience here. Maybe you want that vertical or portrait viewing experience. You have the luxury with this stand. I also want you to know that you can rotate it both ways, which is great. So pick and choose whatever one works best for you right there. Let me show you it from the side. You can get a feel for the tilt. So there's our max tilt down and there's our max tilt back. Show you our lovely swivel again. And with this particular stand, it's really cool. The cable management is built into the base itself. You'll see right here, we can actually pull this off and we have our cable channel tucked away right in here. So there we go. We can route our cables up and through to connect to our monitor. And then we can just hide it with this, just like that. Pretty neat. Now let's go ahead, let's plug it in and power it on. So we have the monitor plugged in, powered on, everything looks great. We have it connected to a desktop PC here. 
you'll notice our illuminated lights at the bottom. Really nice accent there. Let's press our menu button. We'll have multiple options here. So first up, we have our brightness that we can adjust up or down, depending on our preferences. Next to the left, we have our little link icon there. We have our different input options. Then we can go down, we can adjust the volume. So again, up or down, depending on what we want. And then to the right, we have our home option. That's gonna bring up our full menu here, where you'll see we have different options. So professional settings, different modes, different image options we can tweak. Then we have our picture settings here. Turn HDR on or off, you get the idea. Game settings, depending on maybe the type or style of game you're playing, what you want to adjust here. Then we have picture in picture and picture by picture mode. And let's go back into the menu. You'll see the next option we have is our OSD settings here. That's where you can change your language. And then we have some additional settings, audio controls, power settings. You'll also see right here, eye shield, remind, turn that on or off there. But very easy to navigate menu and find exactly what you're looking for. And you just use the multi-function button to scroll up or down or left or right to go into a particular setting. So now let's dive into some of the picture settings here. So we have our three different HDR modes. So let's go down to HDR standard, see if it makes a difference with the image quality. Now we'll do HDR, this is gonna be for movies. And then here's for design. I can't tell a noticeable difference with this particular footage here. We could try to cycle through one more time. Standard, movie, design. Next, let's dive into some of the game image settings here that we can change. So first up, we have our RTS option. So we can turn that on. We can compare it to FPS. There's FPS instead. And then we have our MOBA arena mode there. Don't forget you can turn adaptive sync on or off, adjust the response time. We have multiple response time settings and you could turn on the refresh rate, add a little crosshair if you want. They have tons of different options here, depending on the crosshair style you prefer and they even have an ambient lighting setting. So let's go ahead, let's let this load again, turn it off, back on. So a couple of things you can tweak, whether it's a game or picture quality that you wanna change. Now we have the UFO test pulled up on our display right here, showing us three different FPS values. The point of this test is to see those different frame rates for this particular panel at 240 Hertz. So most of you, if you have a really basic entry level monitor, you're gonna get 60 to 75 Hertz. So this would be your typical viewing experience. Now, if you can power more frames from your system or your console and your monitor can handle it, you will enjoy smoother looking gameplay and footage. So 120 FPS is great moving across the middle there, but basically we're doubling that again to 240 FPS and now we're at 240 Hertz and look at how smooth it is. So pretty substantial difference as we four times the frame rate from 60 to the very top. The Alien and UFO is just super clear. For my eyes, there is still a noticeable difference looking in person at the 120 to the 240, but it's not as drastic as going from the 60 to the 120. So keep that in mind, depending on your current setup, you'll appreciate the higher FPS value with this higher refresh rate monitor if your system and console can handle it. Now let's take a second and we'll talk about ghosting. So we have the UFO ghosting test pulled up right here. Just visually looking at these UFO moving across the screen. It's easier for my eyes to track with this top one and see a little bit more ghosting than I do from the bottom. I think it's just from the colors, or at least my eyes. I'm able to see that the green head of the alien is dragging behind a little bit, as well as the white line with a little bit of red coming around the back of the UFO. So that's what I'm seeing there, a little bit of ghosting being observed. Some of you that's more uh, detrimental to your gaming experience and gameplay. Others of you, maybe more the camp I'm in, unless it's like terribly noticeable that takes away from the experience. It's not really too bothersome to me. And usually I can find that with just about any particular monitor or panel. So just keep that in mind. It can be a little bit subjective to again, what you can tolerate. For me, I'd say it's probably what you would expect. I'd love to not have any ghosting, but in this case, I'm still seeing some 
just moving across as that UFO is making its way towards me. Now let's talk about backlight bleeds. So with this particular monitor, we turned off all the studio lights here and we have a full black screen up and we're looking really critically to see, is there any noticeable backlight bleeding? And in this case, I would say no, if I'm being super duper critical, maybe just a smidge right up here, but not bad at all. Now keep in mind that can truly vary panel to panel, but hopefully you guys have a similar experience. This monitor advertises 99% sRGB and it doesn't disappoint. Using display cal here, we ran a test and you'll see that we also got 99% sRGB, in this case 99.9% .9 for our coverage and 125.1% for our volume. In regards to Adobe RGB, we're showing 80.7% coverage and 86.2% for our volume. And lastly, DCI-P3, we're showing 88.3% coverage and 88.6% for our volume. And for Delta E76, we're showing average of 0.41 with our max being 1.01. Now it's time for our web browsing test where we just do some simple tasks on the computer so you get a feel for what it's gonna be like for day-to-day -day usage. So first up, we have our trending section here. This is on YouTube's page. And then we can just quickly browse it and see everything's fast, responsive, very fluid, looks great. The videos are loading as you would expect. No issues at all. Everything's very visible and easy to browse and navigate to consume some online entertainment. And then next we have The Verge. This is a popular tech blog, so you can get a feel if you want to use this to look at a lot of articles online. Images, videos, everything's loading, mobile ads. Let's just click on an article here see different fonts. It's very clear and crisp. It'll be harder to see from the camera pointed at the display, but I want to point out while we're talking about this panel in this test, I've noticed the viewing angle is fantastic for being a VA panel, much better than I was expecting. Very similar to an IPS display, honestly, with how everything looks. I'm not sure why that is, but that's great. So not a lot of distortion or anything like that. And then lastly, maybe you want to use this monitor to do some shopping, right? We got Amazon pulled up right here. All the products look great. Live streams. Everything is clear, responsive, fast, and fluid with this panel. If you're wondering about built-in speakers, this monitor does have volume controls, but that's to adjust any audio routed to the monitor or through the monitor, I should say. So there are no built-in speakers. Now it's time to test out the input leg on this particular monitor. Now keep in mind, input leg is different from response time. This has an advertised one millisecond response time. I'm unable to verify or confirm their findings, but I can tell you the input lag, which is basically just the amount of time it takes for the monitor to display the received signal. So here we go. We usually go from the value up in the top for our videos. And we're coming in at 18.1 is going to probably be our lowest value there. And look at that. We're holding steadier up. There we go. 18. 0.422. This is going to be one of the highest results we've had. Scepter held the record at around 19 milliseconds for our input leg. But let's go ahead. Let's try some of the other boxes. These will be even higher in value. So 26.8. Call that just 26. And 30 milliseconds. Usually we get around one millisecond here. So check that out. Scepter has been dethroned. Now, what does this really mean for you? I'd say not too much. Unless you're a per professional, highly competitive gamer, you might feel like you're affected by that for the average everyday consumer. I wouldn't say you'd have any issues or notice anything different with that input lag, but it would be nice to see it a little bit better in the future, especially because this is a VA panel, kind of takes the best of both worlds per se from like IPS with some of the better colors and viewing angles, but also picks up some of that better performance from 
TN panels. But in this case, it's interesting to see that we're getting anywhere between 18 to 22-ish milliseconds for our input lag. So the moment you've all been waiting for, we have some gaming footage here from Forza 5. Again, this is 1440p, 240 hertz. And we have it set to 240 FPS, but we're not gonna push anywhere near that. We're using RTX 3070 Ti. We're showing about 115 FPS, give or take a little bit, but look at how smooth the footage and gameplay is. I always love how this game looks. Really, really pretty and remarkable. The reflections on the car, all the different lighting environments. I mean, the movement and motion, right? This is a really fast paced driving game and look at how fluid and smooth everything is. I know the video is not going to do it justice. It never does. But just pay attention to the different lighting environments, the shadows, reflections, glare. You get the idea. And we just have it in the standard image setting too. Again, you can configure that on a game by game basis if you want. But it's looking really good. Now you're looking at Assassin's Creed Valhalla footage here. 1440p, 240 hertz. Standard color mode. Movement and motion looks nice. As the camera pans. I'm liking what I'm seeing so far. The detail in this game is great. There's our smoke billowing up and rising. Got to get to the water, right? We got to see the guys fishing. Good reflections. Pretty graphics intensive game. And cue my favorite scene, the look back on the town with the temple ruins. Colors look great on this monitor, really. For a VA pan, I'm impressed. And on to Borderlands 3 right here. First observation is maybe a little bit washed in the standard image setting. Now we can adjust the brightness too. But I thought it just looks maybe a little bit overexposed. Now I know this game has more of a unique haze in tone to it. Just pointing out what I think I'm seeing here and the adjustments we might have to make. Again, standard image quality, 1440p, 240 hertz. We're getting about 100 FPS. I like seeing the fire there. Can't forget my favorite scene coming up, the slime explosion. Got the little ambush coming here for a little firefight in the town. Boo, a little sneak attack. All right, cue the barrel explosion. There it is, and ta-da. We have some fat, uh, flash bangs coming up here. Movement motion's looking good. And then our eye thingy in the sky. So what about next gen consoles? Well, first up we have the PlayStation 5 connected here. Here's our current video output information. We are getting 1440p and 60 hertz. Now, if you go back into your settings, if for some reason you're not getting 1440p, make sure you follow the prompts to test 1440p output. And then also, if you want 200 or 120 hertz, excuse me, you just need to go ahead and make sure that this is set to automatic. So when you enable this for games that support 120 hertz frame rate, you'll be able to take advantage of that with your monitor. And in this case, we have up to 240 hertz. So we are able to get 1440p and 120 hertz with this display. But assume by default, depending on your game, you'll be getting 1440p at 60. 
And for the Xbox Series X, we're able to get 1440p for a resolution and 120 hertz for our refresh rate with this monitor. So let me share with you my final thoughts in regards to the Innocent 27G1S. This is a fantastic 240 hertz, 1440p gaming monitor. At this price point, you'll be hard pressed to find anything more affordable offering just as much as this monitor does. From simple things that normally you wouldn't get, like some built-in LED lights, I think that's just a nice touch, and we have a super practical stand. I actually discovered this after the fact, after setting it up, but we actually have a built-in headphone hanger as well. So really clever design for just those little details that usually at this price point, those get cut very quickly. The stand is versatile, very easy to use, has all the features you would want. And if for some reason you still don't like it, you have the Visa mount option. Display is a great size. I think 27 inches is the sweet spot and 1440p is the resolution you'd want on a screen this large. Now, I was pleasantly surprised with the color accuracy and quality. It was much better than expected. In regards to the performance while gaming, while a lot of that is very opinionated towards your own personal preferences, I was pleased with it overall. Sure, I could always say I'd love to see less ghosting, things along those lines that you come to find out about just any monitor out there, but the brightness was good for me. I was just pleased with the experience. I think for the price that you're paying, it's a really good deal for everything that's included. For me, I think the biggest takeaway would be I would love to have some built-in speakers. I know a lot of people don't need them or want them, but I would always rather have them than not need them, than need them, than not have them.